Oh, hi there. I'm just getting packed up for a wedding. You know, there's a, a lot of downtime around a wedding when people are just relaxed, hanging out, looking for things to do. So I want to make sure that we have some options, a few different games to bring. Uh, just, you know, ways to kill time. And varying levels, too, because you never know. Some people might not be too familiar with games, and so you want to bring some, some simple stuff. Stuff that's good for the family, but you want everyone to have options. You don't want to leave them, you know, stuck without something that they, they want to do. And after all, uh, you know, as the, the resident board game person, it's my responsibility to bring everything that people could ever possibly want at these things. And, you know, some people don't really feel the need for board games and want to do something else. So I have a couple of magic decks in here, too. And if, if they really like miniatures, I know people say miniatures don't travel well, but really that just means that you need the right equipment, you know, to protect the miniatures in transit and make sure that everything gets there safely. But I don't think this is going overboard. I think this is, you know, probably half of what I bring to an average board game night. Yeah, I think we've all been there. We've all packed away hours and hours and hours of games and toys and puzzles for a three-hour weekday evening game night. I think we've tried to pack up every single box that we own for a weekend away with the family. But rarely do you actually get to play even half of what you bring with you. And over the years, I've tried to get a little bit better about being reasonable with what I bring along. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, pull up a chair, have a seat at the table, and whether you're a button mash hack and slash controller bash, or a meeple moving mastermind of maps, mats, and minis, if you ruffle at the awful riffle shuffle scuffle, or if you're a click clack fake attack number ball luck sack, we're all here for the same reason. I'm Jake. Let's talk games. So I think there's two main categories to a game night. The first is when you're going to sit down with friends for about three hours. Typically everyone already enjoys playing games and you do this on a fairly regular basis. In that case, I would recommend just bringing one. I know, blasphemy. Board gamers typically like to bring a selection, so that way everyone has options. But how often do you bring four games and immediately everyone jumps at the opportunity to play Betrayal, or Catan, or Ticket to Ride? They're classics for a reason. People enjoy playing them. So my recommendation to you would be to just bring one that you want to play. Let your vote be the board game that you bring. Maybe it's something new that you want to try out. Maybe it's something you haven't played in a while. So which game you bring to an evening game night with friends doesn't matter. But I recommend just bring one, maybe two. Maybe something a little lightweight and something a little heavier just to meet the mood. But you don't need to overwhelm people. You don't need to bring your entire collection. The second game night, it's a little more complicated. It might be spread out over a couple days. It might be a vacation, family trip. Something where you don't really know what you're going to be doing or who's going to have the opportunity to play, but you want to have uh, something that fits your hobby, that you enjoy, that you want to share with other people. And that's where you end up with a pile that looks like this. A selection from very light with Uno to very heavy, like Scythe. Bunch of different magic formats and styles of decks. Every possible permutation of game that you could ever want to play. And you're going to bring all of this with you? The entire time? I think that's a little excessive. So let's talk about how to fit this into a backpack. Okay, so rather than looking at this as a pile that we need to tear down, I think we want to look at it as a small pile that we want to build up. We want to check a few boxes. So the way we're going to do this is to take everything away. Let's see if we can do that. That's a little better. Now, let's start building this up. First, let's talk space requirements. I think that'll vary a little bit, but I think generally, if you're traveling, everyone can spare a backpack. 
Now, this is my backpack of choice, and try as I might, I can't find this thing anymore. This was a backpack that was made by Ultra Pro years ago, and it was designed to transport trading card games, which makes it work really well for me. Inside this backpack, there's multiple pockets that are designed specifically to fit deck boxes, which is sweet. So let's start with this and see what we can actually fit inside. The first thing that I always like to bring with me is obviously Magic the Gathering. I'm a big fan of just sitting down at a table and being able to play Magic. So something like this works great. Just a couple dual decks, kind of scratches that itch. It's really good for teaching people to play. It can be a lot of fun to just kind of play as you're doing other things. But if you play a little more seriously or if you expect that you might have an opportunity to play with other people, maybe bring a couple EDH decks. Now, I know EDH decks tend to be in larger deck boxes, but even with that, it's probably reasonable. My wife and I tend to bring these with us. They play reasonably well against each other. There's a lot of variability in these specific decks. And if you think that you might have an opportunity to play EDH, uh, it's the most common format, it's usually good to just bring it. So I would bring a couple EDH decks or some sort of 60 card kitchen table dual decks. So this is an either or, but let's get into the actual board games and other things that we can approach. So usually, there's going to be a lot of variance in age range, interest, and experience that you're going to have at these types of functions. So bring something that kind of satisfies that. Party games can go a couple of different ways, and I have some somewhat strong feelings about what's a good party game and what's a bad party game. These are the three that I like to bring. The first is Uno. Nice and easy, everyone knows it. No reading involved. My son was playing this at five years old. It's a great game, it holds up, it's stable. The second one is we didn't play test this at all. Now this is an old Kickstarter uh, version of the game, but essentially it's a game where the rules are printed on the cards and it's draw a card, play a card, and it's got all sorts of crazy things that happen. It's a good party game. Uh, it's very random. There is no way to get good at this game, and that makes it a lot of fun for people who don't play games very often. The third game that has just absolutely taken over at our family events is called Hogger Logger, and it's a, it's a game that one of my friends developed, but essentially it's just a guessing game of higher or lower, and there's other cards that allow you to kind of manipulate those guesses, and people score victory points as they're able to accurately guess the card on the top of the deck. Super fun to play. But just having a few little things to kind of set aside and have ready to go at a moment's notice, these all require zero setup, can be played instantly, and don't really have a hard cap on the number of people that can play. But let's say you're in charge of the activity for the night, and you are responsible for bringing something to the table that has everyone who's interested in trying it out able to play at the same time. Now we get into the more serious question of what board game should we bring? I think there's a couple right ways to go and a couple wrong ways to go. The wrong way to me and this is dipping back into the party game aspect, is something like Cards Against Humanity. Aside from all of the, the crass cards in the game that some people might find a little off-putting, uh, just the format of the game being essentially a popularity contest uh, can lead to some bad feelings. So I'd recommend against things like this, even the, the softer apples to apples or what do you meme, anything that's like a voting on cards that people play out of their hands can just lead to kind of weird situations. And also I think that it's difficult finding something that's interesting to everyone at the table at once. So I stay away from that style of party game. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to. Your people might be different than my people. One game that I've discovered recently that I really enjoy is Doomlings. Uh, aside from the small form factor, it's a really good game for sitting around the table, teaching it fresh to people, having very little setup time, but actually having a lot of depth of complexity and having the ability to strategically play the game in a way that if someone's good at Doomlings, they'll win more often than people who aren't. So I really like packing that. And you can see in the space that we have, we're still well within our ceiling of fitting into a backpack. But what if we want to bring a full 12 by 12 solid board game? I think there's a few options. There's some right answers and wrong answers. And I think definitely one of the wrong answers would be bring something excessively heavy. Something that... Ugh, <sighs> <sighs> it's 
Something that takes too long to set up, something that's excessively complex, something that has a lot of depth in it or a lot of options and ways of playing. I'd stay away from something like Scythe or something like Eclipse, anything that's really, really heavy. Uh, the other limiting factor on a game like this is that it only plays up to five. Uh, having a game that plays more, five, six, seven, eight, uh, would probably be best for this sort of thing, so I'd stay away from anything too heavy. So just my two cents. Again, my group might be different than your group, but rarely, if we're at an event that isn't specific to playing board games, this is not going to be a great inclusion. So what I like to do is err on the side of flexibility. Having a game that can play extremely complex or really simple is nice. Something that's been in my collection for a long time that I highly recommend is Dominion. Uh, it's an old uh, deck builder. It's one of the first. I really like playing with it. It's a really good intro for games like Magic the Gathering that have a sort of mana resource system. This is a good introduction to that. And it's also something that is somewhat reading light so the young ones can also play it. Um, Intrigue is my set of choice if you're just bringing one box, but you can also take the cards out of these and they pack into a much smaller form factor. So if you want to build a sort of uh, battle box of a few different sets, you can do that. But it also means that each game is unique. Every time you play, you can set up the board completely differently and have very different gameplay experiences. So I really like bringing Dominion with me. Another alternative would be something like Azul. Now, Azul only plays four, which is my only uh, negative thing to say about this. But just having a game that is very visual, very uh, on the board, there's no real hidden information. It's people strategizing against what they can see makes this a really cool way to interact with other people. And to be clear, this is uh, Azul, the, the stained glass uh, version, not the original Azul, although I also recommend the original Azul. I think works really well in that type of situation. So pick one of the larger games and go with that. If you think you're going to have more people playing, something like Seven Wonders can be really nice, just because it plays up to seven, it has a lot of flexibility in it, and it does offer uh, some variable gameplay experiences. So I'd pick one of these more heavy games bring a selection of little light games, and then a couple of dueling games. I know Magic the Gathering is my game of choice, but maybe it's Yu-Gi-Oh! or Flesh and Blood, uh, whatever works for you. And so, packing these things up, again, you are trying to provide your recommendation to the people that are there. So, use your best estimate for what they would enjoy. If I was playing with my family, I think I would definitely go with Seven Wonders or Doomlings. And so if I were to load this up, let's see if we can get all of this to fit in the backpack. Chances are we're gonna have a little bit more EDH there. So this is going to be essentially what I would take. And so loading this into a backpack, we should have enough space to kind of get everything fitted. Get that across the top. Let's drop these in this outside pouch. should have enough space to get these last couple magic decks into the top. Now, this backpack ugh, was specifically designed by Ultra Pro for decks and trading card games, so it's somewhat designed for this fact, but the interior space is no different than any other backpack, and fitting an entire weekend of gaming into one single piece of luggage is really handy. So that's essentially how I like to think about packing up a go bag for a weekend of gaming. Your approach might be different. If you have a better recommendation, I would love to hear it, but I am just tired of carrying around a giant pizza delivery box of four giant games and then not actually touching any of them. It's great exercise, but probably a little bit of wasted effort. Anyways. I appreciate you hearing me out. It's been nice talking to you.
Oh my gosh. Alright. Okay, let's get it all back in the box. Thank you. 